And welcome back to Project Hospital. Welcome back to Royal Peeping Hospital. Uh, we are at the end of this series um, where today we're doing a hospital tour. The hospital is now finished and I am now putting it onto the workshop. It is now available. It's there right now for you to download. There is a link in the description below if you would like to download this hospital. Um, when uploading it to the workshop of course it comes without staff um, and the uh, insurance scenarios are reset so that you can play it through uh, yourself however if you would like my exact hospital with all my staff because of course they have all been custom named all the um uh, all the staff members and that sort of stuff then there is another link below also uh, where i have uploaded my save to my onedrive so that you can download that and put it into your safe file for the game so you can have it exactly as it is and of course the insurance companies on my hospital are all done except Overcure which uh, I haven't had time to finish just yet. I thought it would be nice to have a tour of Royal Peeping Hospital. This hospital for those of you that are new here was built from the ground up. Um, started a long time ago in streams. Building costs are switched on um, and it's been recently finished in this series that is now currently coming to an end which covered uh, the Hospital Services DLC and Doctor Mode DLC. Um, before we start the tour, it is worth noting that I have prepared a space for infectious diseases DLC. So um, once that DLC is released, which should be in the next few days, I will be starting another series instantly. So there'll be there'll be no loss of Project Hospital. It's not going anywhere. A series will start very soon, um, probably next week. Uh, and we will be covering infectious diseases and this is where it will go and i will then upload the hospital again uh, to the workshop post infectious diseases dlc so that two versions of the hospital are available depending on whether you have the dlc or not i thought that might be i thought that might be quite nice so yes shall we check out the hospital we'll start um on the ground floor that's where we will start put the walls up it can be a little bit easier to read the game with the walls up um so the main uh, entrance as you can see is very much here this is um the main reception um and we've got the reception for every department um in here um and there is uh, staff day and night we've got a couple here in emergency and these color floorings uh, denote which departments are which you can also see that on the glass here just to help guide um, is also uh, which department you're dealing with. Uh, there's staff rooms either side, which can be accessed from this large waiting room. This large waiting room here is for emergency. This is the emergency waiting room. There's also some uh, toilets here. And then through these double doors, this is all the doctor clinics for every department across here. So you can see we have general surgery um, and their little waiting room is also just out here. It has a little breakout room with snacks and stuff and entertainment. Um, and there's also a toilet for them to use. These toilets have been very, very useful. And this uh, design is largely repeated. Here we have um, cardiology and you can see as you go into the departments, uh, the icons are on the glass there as well, plus so we've got them on the wall. So blue is general surgery, uh, pink is cardiology. Uh, these colours have largely been uh, inspired by prefabs um, uh, that come with the game. Uh, in fact, even the room designs have been, I've just uh, vamped them up somewhat. Um, neurology is the purple. Uh, then over here we have cardiology, which is yellow. Uh, here is our four emergency rooms and our uh, two uh, general surgeries. This is orange and this is green. And then we've got, uh, you can see an exit out here uh, to the rest of the hostel and it's the same at this end as well. There is another exit out here um, into the main part of the hostel. You can see here uh, that we've uh, largely done some signage. This shows us that on the first floor, and this actually is a bit of a thing. So it's a bit different between Americans and uh, English I don't know about European but in England this would be the ground floor not the first floor this is the first floor so when I say first floor it was Americans would probably consider this the second floor um, so but in in England it's ground first second third 
Okay, so bear that in mind. Um, not sure about Europeans. Do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know how, how they do their, their floors. Um, so first floor, so not ground floor, next one up, has cardiology and, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> this is orthopedy, cardiology. It also has the labs, radiology, and it has a pharmacy up there. Um, the second floor has neurology, general surgery. It will also have um infectious diseases when we get there it has the icu and it also has training and you can see uh, uh these things as well so this is denoting what is on the ground floor um so this here um is what is in this far building on the ground floor and on this side uh is trauma and it talks about this row of shops. So we do have a row of shops outside here with some parking. Um, we have a cafe. I wanted this to look like, yeah, a, a normal cafe that anyone could go into. You'll note actually that there's staffing here. And if we look at the way that this has been set up, there is also uh, one of these meeting rooms. This is the meeting room uh, for visitors, uh, for internal medicine uh, so you will see all sorts of people coming into this building which i thought was a nice touch um, we we do have a little bit of an alleyway back here for access only um, we've got the gift shop <coughs> here in the center we also have a little staff break room here and staff toilets and then we have we have two pharmacies in this hospital this is a small one made to look like a shop um it's sort of a typical pharmacy shop and it does have uh, a couple of uh, staff members in there uh probably named something ridiculous sue's thump and uh, tig stop there you go uh <laughs> all the staff are named um and then a public toilet as well so we've got we've got um, a nice little row of shops there over here is trauma um and you can see here this is where the ambulances was stopped we've even actually got also this um this uh, little ambulance thing and I believe that ambulances moving forwards are going to be uh, can be vandalized and stuff like that I believe uh, in the new DLC coming there'll be new ambulances and stuff like that so I may need uh, to upgrade this somewhat to make it more of a secure area I don't know how that'll be working that'll be interesting to find out and um, this building which is supposed to look a bit like a mechanics that look after wash and maintain the ambulances is actually being used um, a lot for the administrative department so this is our head janitor in his office there and we do have some of the janitors here uh, mainly to do with looks rather than efficiency that one i'm gonna be honest so here we have trauma oh look good timing so you can see here we do have uh, an entrance and this is very much uh, the trauma center here um now for filming wise uh, filming wise i have checked i've removed the trauma room from here made it a corridor but it it can absolutely be made into trauma in emergencies if this gets filled up or you can make it trauma all of the time it's fully equipped it, it will work but it was becoming a real pain in the bum while making episodes to constantly have people here and you can't really see them the, these were better so i've removed that for the next series uh, in case you're wondering should you get hold of the hospital uh we have um yeah and they've all been numbered so you can see how many trauma rooms that we have here uh this is uh where we normally have all the stretchers i don't normally see all the stretchers out we may need to see about getting them more stretchers but this is where they keep their stretchers uh indeed you can see here that we have the doctor's office through here these are all of our trauma doctors um and i, I have to be honest that uh, a lot of staff members are quite well um trained I say trained i mean rather they've been working in the hostel for a long time so you can see we've got this but i've recently changed uh, this one to uh be anith anethid i struggle with that word anith anesthetologist <laughs> help me uh yes yeah, so um because of course that is best for your icu and trauma um doctors uh so yeah um you know that they, they are most of them not all of them but most of the doctors have been working here a long time so if you do download the one with staff uh, that is worth noting which uh, makes a nice difference uh, with the hospital overall because it means you need less rooms things are getting done more efficiently and faster and that sort of stuff um, you know so that's that's sort of the glory of the hospital being finished and the staff being well trained you may notice that if you put new staff into this hospital that you may have departments overflowing and really uh, just concentrate on getting them trained 
up and it will even itself out. Um, uh, through here, we have all the stretcher nurses. These are all the stretcher nurses in here. Um, and we also have a little staff room, which is actually um, accessed uh, from the hospitalization side of trauma. Uh, there's also a toilet and a little breakout area for anybody that is on this trauma hospitalization area although staff can use this too of course uh, we do have a little doctor's office here this is for the head of the department they've got their own little office um, and yeah you can see here that this is uh, the hospitalization for trauma that we have up along here uh, we also have uh, this is the main entrance into trauma for patients uh, and that sort of stuff and you can see that I've made like a little reception area here so this is all the um, care staff and trauma nurses this is all the nurses that will uh, they don't do stretcher work they look after the patients on both sides um, so that's what they do and then of course we have the lifts we'll talk about the lifts in just one moment um, so over here on the ground floor this is very much internal medicine. Uh, everything internal medicine needs is right here. We do have uh, both the wards um, and every ward is the same. They are all fully equipped with their own toilets, uh, visitation, um, uh, seating, drinks. They've got sandwiches and all that sort of stuff. Um, and you can see they get well used, uh, although largely by staff. Uh, it's the same on the other side. Uh, red is your high dependency blue is just a normal hospitalization uh, they also come fully equipped with their uh, nurses stations this is to house not um, trans uh, transfer nurses but the patient care ones that actually look after the patients on the ward and then uh, of course we also have uh, stretchers we have additional stretchers in the corridor here um, and uh, what else let me deal with this um, yes <laughs> what was I saying um, yeah, so we've got additional stretchers here. Um, I think that's everything there. They've got a little garden here. What annoys me about this is that these don't seem, these fences, uh, staff can just pass through. So occasionally you will get them come through here uh, with stretchers, which is actually really annoying. Um, so over here, um, these are the diagnostic rooms. You can see they are all numbered and whatnot. All, all signage is complete for around the entire hospital. Um, we again have a staff room here, a toilet for the staff. We have a little locker area. Uh, this here is uh, all the stretcher nurses for um, internal medicine. This is for the head of internal medicine, which is Patreon Squeezel. Hells yeah. Uh, and this is where the internal medicine doctors sit. Um, uh, not surgery, they only deal in diagnostics. But of course, we also have uh, these rooms as well, the treatment rooms, as they no longer do surgery um, at uh, internal medicine. So this is their treatment rooms. Um, and I've uh, made an additional uh, staffing area to hold more doctors so that we've got enough doctors to deal with all these rooms and uh, here you'll note that there is also a cardiology room uh, for um, internal medicine uh, there's a little waiting room out here as well so that patients uh, walk in outpatients can come here also the other half of downstairs deals with all of the cardiology sonography rooms um, and also uh, this neuro neurological room um, and again they have been color coded to deal with uh, the specific departments uh, that they are in we do have a, a large toilet here as none of these waiting rooms have their own toilets uh, like these uh, waiting rooms have their own dedicated toilets so we have a large um, toilet for staff and um, outpatients here to use um, yeah so I've done it uh, again inspired by uh, the original prefabs uh, if the beds are, are and curtains are red, that's a cardiology room. If it's blue, it's a sonography room. So, and I've, I've largely tried to keep sonography rooms this side, and cardiology rooms on this side. However, uh, the problem that we had uh, with uh, the cardiology cardiography—it's a cardiography room—is um, that the sonography wasn't being used, and this is uh, critical quite a lot. So I doubled it up in the end because, of course. If a cardiology pa a patient does need a sonography room, they can go to the one at X-ray. And this was not getting any patients either, so we've just doubled up hardly any patients to come to this one room, which is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, so that's good. You will note that sometimes these will become critical 
these uh, cardiography rooms, but um, that's only sometimes. You don't panic. It's just some days are worse than others. That is just the way that it is. So that is the ground floor. Now, these uh, two lifts um, do serve, uh, have been placed uh, with thought. Uh, so this lift is very much uh, largely for emergencies. Uh, so we'll see that upstairs it goes to um, x-rays and it goes to um, the labs and then further up it goes to the ICU and it will also have um, infectious diseases here as well so this lift uh, this uh, lift here is fantastic for for emergencies um, you'll notice as well that there are sky bridges right across um, to this lift this lift is uh, to make sure that all the departments um, all the wards here uh, close to a lift that can take them straight to surgery which is up here uh, so yeah uh, so that's that lift but of course you can go across these two lifts should somebody from over here need to get to surgery it's easy done um, yeah so shall we deal with the first floor in this front building then again we do have uh, here a lovely uh, large cafeteria um, this would be really good to get there's like a mod for the cafeteria on the workshop to allow uh, patients and everything to use um, this department I recommend that I'm uploading it without mods installed so that uh, it's a bit more accessible but it's a mod I certainly recommend um, and then over here we have radiology um, we actually still have a couple of spares so there's room for expansion here should you need to build any more but I have found that these rooms so far have been sufficient we have a nice large toilet here and a staff room and uh, we have a lot of janitor closets here for many different departments and another staff room uh, we've got quite a few CTs and angios here uh, some dedicated to ward patients only of course because uh, cardio and neurology uh, need those quite urgently a lot of the time um, here are our three labs um, so yes this building uh, houses all of our labs and uh, they also get look, their own little garden they've got staff and toilet and their cleaning closet um, so that's all here I'd really like it if they did everything at this door and didn't have patients come to their lab doors but i can't seem to make it work no matter how much jiggery pokery i uh, i give it um and uh these labs seem to work fine even though they're not fully staffed they seem to work fine uh, i've made it so that we have a little area where they get washed up and cleaned and then they can come into here this is where they keep all of their samples refrigerated and stuff and then they come into the main lab every single staff member has their own lab working area uh, with their own glasswork and microscope where necessary um, and then in the center tends to be uh, or up against this wall or both in this case uh, where they have all additional equipment there tends to be enough like these there's enough for every um, workstation in, in the department so that's that's pretty well stocked um, out here a uh, little bit of role play happening out here so this is the waiting room for the labs and I've also made a makeshift reception that of course doesn't get used for the labs um, it just it looks nice uh, there's also uh, some toilets here and then our main pharmacy so this is based more on a pharmacy you might find in a hospital um, and this is uh, got a lot more staff in it so uh, you know there's plenty um, of pharmacy services around to make sure that everybody in such a large hospital is being served um, so that is that um, and then across here you can see here we have um, the orthopedic department same ward different color basically um, and across here they have their diagnostic rooms and then the same setup in terms of staff facilities I've kept here absolutely same across all uh, ward departments you can see as well everything is uh, fully signed we do have over here um, some the all the way up actually these are uh, janitor closets um, for varying departments uh, and here we have uh, cardiology across here um, and you'll be starting to notice the pattern here it looks very much the same um, uh, the difference though with this department is that these beds are fully equipped um, to not only be uh, a normal observation but also to be high dependency as well because you get a lot of high dependency patients on cardiology of course um, and you'll actually note that 
a lot of this is dedicated to high dependency at the moment and uh, as she says that it's quite high use this one because this hardly ever gets used but you can move this line up and down as much as you like these beds are ready to go um, for both ward types so in a pinch you can do that um, and also this particular ward has more defibrillators um, there's usually a defibrillator at each end you get one here on all wards and uh, one here on all wards but uh, yeah these two wards get an additional one in the center because of course uh, for obvious reasons you get quite a few crashes uh, around here uh, all these end gardens are accessible as well uh, for people to spend time out in um, uh, just as a nice little you know nice little thing should they want to go outside uh, next up we have neurology here very much uh, the same as always um, oh that floor needs sorting out <laughs> and uh, general surgery across here as well um, but same setup same setup so moving up then uh, we move into things that really don't uh, require, we've missed ICU, let's not worry about it. Uh, actually, let's, let's just pop down again because there, there is something I need to say about the ICU. So this is where, um, of course, uh, Infectious Diseases Department will go. Um, yeah, so here's the ICU and also training is here. So we've got a large uh, training department uh, over here as well. Um, and the ICU is here. Um, you can see we've got nine beds in the ICU. I think it's actually ten, starts at zero. Um, and we have over here. Uh, this is the stretcher nurses over here. Uh, this is where they sit. Uh, these are the patient care nurses in here. And this is uh, where I believe the ICU is supposed to do blood work. It's like a little mini lab, isn't it? But they never do. The, the haematologist technologists always always come here and grab the samples and go and do it so i don't i don't really understand uh, why they bother with that um we've got a cleaning closet doctor's office here um we've got a little locker area again with toilets and the staff room they also get a lovely large garden as well which can also be accessed from here there's also another another garden from here you can uh, see as well that this is sort of uh, it's a garden inside um, with paths going all through it so a lovely lovely path um, yeah uh, lovely garden um, now originally ICU was supposed to be up here by surgery and when I was building the hospital ICU was here um, but it was so busy and in constant use that when I was doing this hospital up I actually really needed to move the ICU out the way to be able to actually build it sensibly um, so it's not exactly where I want it and I suppose moving forwards uh, this is pathology here it might be best to put pathology here and maybe reduce down the surgeries um, I mean they do get used but I don't think we ever use eight surgeries um, so yeah uh, maybe one day I don't know it's it's a lot of work um, but really the ICU would serve better over here but this has worked fine even those most uh, chronic patients that come in with neurology this this whole setup is working beautifully um, so yes uh, you can see here very much surgery a lot of surgeries we've dedicated two surgeries to each department as you can see here, this here is the large office that holds all of our surgery um, doctors. And you can see they also have some toilets. There's a staff room here. Uh, they've got access to food and drink and whatnot. And over here is the office for all of our surgery nurses. Um, yeah, so this is their office, which can be accessed uh, through here, but as well through the doctor's office. They have their own uh, toilet over here. Um, and access to this same staff room area uh, so that's nice um, and again signposted as always everything is absolutely uh, signposted um, and then pathology uh, we do have pathology here what is this message three rooms are critical does happen uh, like I say though this this can vary um, it's not something I tend to worry about now I mean I look at them but I haven't really changed anything um, because at the moment we, we have got 25% more patients coming in to the clinic so it is going to um, cause uh, problems. 
they also do have their own garden uh, as well I, it was important um, while building this hospital I wanted um, to have quite a lot of uh, greenery going on I think that's been established um, and of course uh, I've made a faux helicopter at the moment uh, landing and you can see here that it does have access and it, it will be able to take them down uh, to either infectious diseases or, or, or trauma uh, I'm hoping we'll be able to put the helipads on the roofs I guess we'll find out um, but that's that's the hope there. You can also see that it has uh, been given a lot of thought on uh, nighttime lighting here. Um, outside, we do have various car parks as well, as you can see, and all uh, crossings are, uh, have signs and crossings are all in logical, sensible places. Um, and we have another car park here. I've also uh, given some thought as well to pathing into the main hospital. We have a nice plaza here. Um, it's a shame they don't use it, but we have a nice plaza here. Um, and let's uh, bring these down. Uh, there, I have put trees as well, even all around the back. There's uh, trees and everything. Uh, we've got just a, a normal bit of area back here. There is a small garden tucked away in there. Um, and then, of course, uh, parking here and that. I'd like to make this a one-way, but that's not really something... <laughs> that uh, is a thing in this game. I've also manually placed uh, uh, lots of um, puddles and stuff like that. So even if it hasn't been raining, there is always uh, puddles and whatnot around and various different types of cracks. And yeah, so um, lots of, um, I mean, each of the rooms as well, I, I, I feel I've managed to decorate in sort of extreme detail. Uh, of course, I've come to radiology, which is probably one of the, the least decorated rooms. Um, you'll note uh, if you get this hospital that a lot of these signs can't be read. They're blocked. Uh, that's because a lot of them there uh, are there for um, decoration rather than actual function. But if I do need them to function uh, like these ones here, you know, because they do provide entertainment, they are available to read uh, in places where it's absolutely necessary. But yeah, um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. A lot of work has gone into this hospital, um, trying to find the most efficient way to lay out rooms, um, but also with a pinch of sort of role play realism about them, uh, as well as thinking about the functionality of the game and how it, and how it operates, you know, um, and trying to get it all to fit in. What I would say about this hospital is that you may need a fairly good PC to run it. It is very big. Um, it has a lot going on, especially if you download the fully staffed one um, uh, from that link as well. But there we are. There it is. Royal Peeping Hospital before infectious diseases is uh, put into the hospital. And I uh, will see you very, very soon for a new series. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to all my Patreons for their continued support.